This is everything that the box came with. We have our, um, our clamp that also came with this guy here. And we've got our screws, then we have our thing. So I'm gonna try to figure out the best way to get this assembled and then I'll come back to you guys. All right, so here's the first thing we do is after we're taking this apart here, I notice that these grooves on the uh, clamps actually slide nicely into this low profile bit here, right in that groove. I've got these two supplied screws, so I'm gonna mount these. You've got three different um, orientations. It looks like you could also mount it this way as well. So you can mount it this direction in two places, or you can mount it this direction in three places. And you can also choose to put it, you know, kind of any, any way you want to. I guess you just can't go over the, the little tie down there. So I'm gonna get this mounted up in the best place. And I'm actually not quite sure. Do I wanna put it on the bars? Uh, or do I want to put it up here? So we're going to figure out where the best place is and I will get right back to you guys. We're still only staging here, but I put this, um, this is my setup here. So obviously there's only two two holes here that would be perfect for supporting the uh, the included bolts that go flat. And the, the idea here is that I did try the um, this even flipped both ways. So you, you see here you've got, you know, this orientation for um, larger handlebars. And if you flip it the other direction, you've got a smaller orientation for smaller bars, which this actually does kind of work on this one here. But the problem is um, this doesn't rotate. So the phone would be facing outward. So if I, you know, ditched this, obviously I could put the phone facing me, but uh, I don't have that. And this really doesn't, this moves a little bit, but not enough to really get anything right there because I still have to be able to remove the GPS for maintenance. So uh, it looks like the only place that really is going to work for me is the center handlebar right here. Um, so the idea is that I put it like this, um, hopefully, and, uh, that way I can still access the squeeze. So we'll see how that works. Um, and then my, sorry, my USB charger is over here. So I would have the uh, phone sideways, maybe. Now I want to do it upright. Let's see if we make this work. I want to actually have the phone upright because sideways the iPhone does. I keep my orientation locked. So we'll try to get this working with the phone upright without uh, getting away the keyless as well. So maybe it moves over here. Still <laughs> work in progress. I'm just trying to get it all staged and then I can figure out the orientations. Well, I don't know if this is gonna work. So this is kind of my seating position here. And this is great. This is rock solid. It's not going anywhere. It is a very hardcore mount, uh, but I can't see my speedometer. <laughs> or anything. <laughs> see the GPS, but uh, yeah, this is definitely this is great. Um, I intentionally mounted it high because I want room for the tank bag that goes here. Uh, turning it, obviously it's not in the way at all of the tank bag. Um, if I were to drop it, let's drop it real quick. So that's dropped down. Again, not moving, but if I'm sitting up, it's still gonna be hard to see anything. Um, it's almost as if it's built for the phone to be sideways, but that doesn't work for me. This isn't an Android device, this is an iPhone. So when it's sideways, the lock screen looks weird and uh, I can't read text messages, they'll come in straight up. The lock screen is vertically oriented. Um, so I guess I could move it over here, maybe, but then I've got this guy in the way as well. The, uh, these are my, my, um, hand guard, uh, mounts. All right. So now we have the, um, this is my largest tank bag. Um, so the phone's on now, eye level, we can still see things. Um, speedo is obstructed though in this view. I've got the phone at the highest setting as well. But when I turn, it doesn't hit the tank bag, or it does, but not, not until, you know, my controls are obviously hitting first, so that's fine. Um, but I really can't put it any lower than that. That's as low as it can go. And then if I'm sitting on the bike, this is my eye level. Um, I really can't see the speedometer. So perhaps I move it over here. <laughs> So we've moved the mount here, so it's still moving, I'm not tightened down yet. I've got it in the high position, so that's where that means that I have the bracket mounted low and the, and the phone coming up high. I can move this down a bit if I wanted to, if it's too high. It looks like a better compromise though, if you look at it straight on from eye level. Let's put the phone in and check it out. Well, this is my final attempt, I guess. So this is the right side. Now I can't see the trip computer. Um, I mean, the whole setup is $109. <laughs> So I don't, it's just not gonna work for me. $100 for this, uh, it's really well built. It's just not gonna work on a GS. So I'm gonna talk to the manufacturer and see what we can figure out in the meantime. So here is the phone sideways. Obviously this is what it was designed for, it's going sideways. 
Um, if I'm sitting up, I can see everything now. Um, if I go to unlock it, I can get down here and do the volume if I need to, but I can't read messages. I mean, this is definitely designed for Android phones. Uh, I can't read messages. And um, I turned off rotation lock. But you'll notice that when you unlock it, it defaults to being a uh, portrait. So it takes time for it to figure out that you're in landscape mode. If I open music, it's also now straight up and down. Um, I can't go sideways in music. So the other applications work just fine in sideways mode. Well, like mail, for example, and calendar. But um, you know, if I can't use music up and down, uh, this is a pretty pointless thing. Let's go ahead and grab the tank bag. I really don't want to see how it looks with the tank bag. So let's say I do decide to keep this. Again, this is my viewing angle of the bike. Tank bag is there. I can't even see the, see the phone. If someone's calling, I want to see who it is before I pick up. I can't even see who it is. Um, so the sideways position is not going to work for me um, for this at all. I have to go vertical, and if I go vertical, it's in the way of my Speedo. So I think this mount was made for real dual sports and enduro bikes, and um, it also made for Android phones that are sideways. I don't think it was iPhone-centric and GS-friendly. So for now, I'm giving this a thumbs down, and... Uh, I'm going to see if I can return it. So I followed uh, Hondo Garage's advice and I affixed a RAM mount. So they offered to let me return the low profile clamp, which is a $40 add-on. <clears throat> Instead, I spent uh, $6 in this RAM mount bulb. So I'm going to remove the X grip. Oh, I need vice grips. This is hard uh, for the bike. And then we'll install this. And this will be a perfect solution, I think, for mounting the phone on the bike. And there it is. So we've got our thing here. The bike will actually go this way into there and slide in like that. But I think we can call this case closed. I will do a follow-up video that simply reviews the Hondo Garage Perfect Squeeze um, anti-vibration mount, which will affix to the back of this. So I did not use Loctite on the RAM ball there because I didn't want to um, make it permanent. But yeah, this is great. Nice cockpit here. This thing. I don't need to review the stability of this thing. When the bike, when the phone has been cranked down this way with this button here, once you turn this five or six clicks, it's not moving anywhere. It's really, really stable. Okay guys, thanks.